In this demonstration, we'll be building a simple spoon using the surface building command curve network. To begin, I'll set a linear dimension that will indicate the size of the spoon. I'll set it along the x-axis and I'll move over by 150 millimeters. I can type that in, hold down the shift key to align it, and then put the end in place. I'll move up about two centimeters. This will just act as a guideline for the size of the spoon that we're going to be building. The next thing we'll do is we'll start putting some of the curves in place to indicate the shape of the spoon. In the top view, using the control point curve, click onto the X axis, making sure that the grid snap is turned on and then place your second point along that same axis. From here, you can decide on the shape of your spoon, coming in at the stem, and then widening out further at the back. We'll also align the final two points and then bring it in towards the center. Now we'll move over to the front view We'll use the same control point curve, snap in to the end point, keep an eye on the cursor as you move through, looking at it in both the top and the front view. We're trying to think of the depth of the bowl of the spoon at any given point, remembering that it has to come back up and even over that plane when it hits the neck of the spoon. We can adjust this later, but we're just trying to get it close. F do your best to keep the shape of the spoon very simple. We can get it more complex later on or on a second try. Again, we can make adjustments to any of these curves. If you're not sure of the shape, you can select points on the curve, move them around. Same with the points along in the top view. We can adjust those as well. And here you might also want to get a spoon from your kitchen and just make some measurements so that you have a sense of what it should look like. So what we've done is we've drawn the spoon looking at it from two different views. One is from above and the second is from the side. Now we can actually merge those views. That's what we're going to do to create part of the shape of the spoon. Under the curve menu, we'll use a command called curve from two views. We'll select the first and the second curve. And what it will do is it will generate a third curve that covers both of those views. If we select it and look at it from the top, it matches the top view. And if we look at it from the side, it matches the side view. You can see that as we do that, more points are put in place. And this is a bit too much information. So what we're going to do is we'll use Edit Menu, Rebuild, and we'll change the point count to about 12 and leave the degree at 3. And then hit Rebuild. Reducing the point count will also adjust the shape of the curve, so you may have to modify your points once more in order to make sure that you get something close to what you started with. To make it a little bit easier, I'm going to take the original curve that indicates the top view, and I'm going to put it on a hidden layer. I can just say hide objects. In order to create the edge of the spoon as it follows into the handle, what we'll do is we'll select this curve, further select the points along the bowl. The points that go into the neck or the handle of the spoon we'll leave alone. We're just going to define the bowl itself. Now I'll move into the front view. Under transform, we'll use a command called set XYZ coordinates. 
where we can indicate along which axis we're going to be setting all of these points. We're going to move them along the Z axis, which is moving up and down, but they'll align with each other perfectly. I'll say apply, and you can see all of the points are put in line, and then we can adjust up or down on the Z axis. Of course, here I want to snap in to the initial point that then matches with the curve along the bottom. Another thing that we want to make sure of is that as well as these being aligned at this specific height, we also want to take these points and align them using the same command, set x, y, z. Here I'm going to set them along the x. Snap back into the original location of that endpoint. Again, this is just going to give us a better surface in which to build. And we'll also do the same thing at the other end, taking those last two points setting them along the X like this. And finally, in the right view or in the front view, we can also set those again up and down along the Z axis. Again, this will just ensure that we get a better surface result by aligning those two ends. With those in place, we can now take that side profile and we can mirror it along the center, making sure that you snap in to those points as well. Looking at it, you can see that the spoon is starting to take shape. As long as I don't touch the end points, I'm just going to adjust one of these middle points and I'm just going to pull it up a little bit higher in order to shape it a little bit more. And maybe that can come forward as well. With what we have in place, we can go ahead and generate a surface and I'll show you using another command, loft. We can select each of these ends rebuild it with more control points. It will give you a better result. We'll aim for something somewhere around 24. You can see it gives you the basic shape. I'm going to show you another way to go about this that's going to be a little bit more accurate and will allow us to develop the form even more. That's developing the cross-section curves. The way we'll do that is we'll use this arc tool Select Start End Point on Arc. With your Object Snap turned on with Near, we can select a point along that curve. Hold down Shift. It will snap in to the corresponding intersection. That sets the two ends of the arc. And now we're going to move into the front view to set the final point. Here we can snap along that bottom curve with the near object snap. I'm also trying to align it so that it's perpendicular to that curve somewhat. It doesn't need to be perfect. And again, that should give us a better surface result. I'm going to do a few more sections along the spoon. Then we'll have everything in place in order to complete the curve network surface. Repeat that command, arc, start, end, point on arc, and continue. For the final curve, I'm just going to come off of the 
curve itself and just give it a little bit more of an arc and just see if that translates to the back of the handle. You can see this one's not tied perfectly. We'll just see what result we get. Remember, we can also adjust that by grabbing those points and then moving it down slightly to change the arc. With everything in place and all of those endpoints meeting along the curves, we have a well-defined network of curves that run in two different directions. There's three curves running in one direction, the rest are running in the opposite direction. To generate the surface, if everything's set up properly, we can actually just select the curves and then select the command curve network and it will be able to figure out the result. There are some settings in here that are important to adjust. Basically we're going to edge match using the position at all four points and then say OK and this is the result. This surface doesn't have any thickness and that's what we're going to do next. We're going to use the offset surface command. I'll offset it towards the top by a distance of 1.5 millimeters. In order to get it to the top, we'll have to flip the direction so that the arrows are pointing upward. I'll press enter. The resulting surface is offset by exactly 1.5 five centimeters all along. The next thing that we're going to do is slightly rotate the bottom of the spoon. We'll look at it from the front view so we can see the result. The reason that we're going to do this is so that we get a variation of thickness. Generally the tip of the spoon is supposed to be a little bit thinner and more comfortable as you use it and the handle needs to be stronger and thicker. So if everything is 1.5 and we angle this by about a degree, we can see if the results will work for what we're doing. I'll select the bottom surface and we're going to rotate it to an angle of negative 1, just clicking on the arc of the gumball. You can see it rotates upward and the last thing we'll have to do here is slightly move it and to do that I'm going to turn off the grid snap so that I have more control and I'll move it in line bringing it down just slightly from where it was. This gives us a very thin section at the top. Over here at the end of the handle it gets a lot thicker. And we can play around and figure out um, what those are. To finish off I'm just going to blend the surfaces along the edge. Because of how we built the surface we should get a simple nice result. I'll use blend surface. Whenever you use blend surface make sure you select chain edges. We'll select one edge and the corresponding connected edge that carries through. That counts as the first segment and then the second segment is selected in along the bottom. The seam point to adjust we'll just press enter and we'll see what kind of result we get. Remember you can adjust to change the curvature. You can play with some of these and you can even see what the result looks like and sometimes one or the other will look better. I'm going to go with that and say OK. For the most part this should give us something that's either fully closed or close to being closed along most of the edges. The one area that we might have problems is in this section here. And we can see there are some little things happening there that I'm not sure if they're exactly what we want. We can have a look at it and then I'll just show you quickly how to deal with it if this section is not as clean as you want it to be. I'm going to select that surface and it's actually a poly surface. There's two surfaces that make it up. So first I'm going to explode it. Now we have one on one side and one on the other and you can see their edges actually overlap in that position which is 
a bit problematic when we're trying to close it. I'm going to cut back the surfaces and I'll select one at a time using split, but I'm going to right click it and use the command split by ISO curve. And then we can go in setting the right direction, either U or V. Then we can go in and find a spot just away from that seam. So I'm just going to go along there and click where I want it to be cut. I'll press enter and that separates part of the surface that can be deleted. I'll do the same thing on the other side, so I'll repeat that. Split by ISO curve by right clicking and we'll move away, click and press enter. That's going to separate the surface and then we can delete it. Now we need to close this up. So we have the top surface, the bottom surface, and these blended surfaces that come in. I'll take the top and the bottom. I'll use a command curve from objects, duplicate border. That puts two curves in place that go all the way around. What I'm trying to get out of this is really just a curve that goes from this edge to this edge. With those selected, I'm going to use split and I'll select these two surfaces as cutting objects and press enter. And what that does is it cuts the curve so that I can deselect this portion and this portion. The other curves we don't need, so I'll just delete them. So that was just a roundabout way of ending up with a curve here and a curve here. And now we have everything in place to be able to do a sweep to rail or an edge surface. Under the surface menu, I'll use sweep to rail using those two as the rails and then selecting these blended curves as the sections. And then I'll sweep. The result, you can see it's a lot cleaner. It meets all of the edges and now this can be joined together with everything else. I'll use join and now it's completely closed as a closed solid object. So now this can be and is suitable for 3D printing.